Our next category is lithium disilicate. And there's really only one on the market, and that's Emax. And I think most of you are probably familiar with Emax. Again, lithium disilicate. Flexural strength of this material is approximately 400 megapascals. So, as you can see, this is about four times stronger than the porcelain on a PFM, yet only about a third of the strength of our KDZ Bruxer. Now, our KDZ Aesthetic, as I mentioned, is about 650. So, a, a little less in strength of our KDZ Aesthetic, which is our anterior monolithic, or our aesthetic monolithic zirconia, and a third of that of our monolithic KDZ Bruxer. Now, where I use Emacs is veneers, anterior crowns, and that includes premolars. I consider a premolar to be an anterior tooth, and posterior crowns with adequate occlusal clearance. And I would say a minimum of one millimeter occlusal clearance. As I mentioned earlier, with the KDZ Bruxer or the KDZ Aesthetic Monolithic Zirconia, we can go 0.5 millimeters. So in some situations on second molars where the patient has a, a reduced inner arch distance, maybe a short clinical crown prep, and we have minimal occlusal clearance, Emax is contraindicated in my opinion for that. That's where a KDZ Bruxer or a KDZ Aesthetic is ideal. The other application for Emax is anterior three unit bridges. And the punic width maximum is 11 millimeters in the anterior, so that's single punic and nine millimeters in the posterior. So that is a premolar. So I have no problem going a bridge from 27 to 29 or 20 to 22 with Emax, but as soon as we go in and we replace a molar where the punic width is greater than nine millimeters, we're gonna switch to either BFM or a zirconium, either substructure or monolithic.